We do have the data out right now. We've got uh, GDP annualised for the fourth quarter, the final take coming in better than expected at 2.9%. I'm interested in the revision as well. Remember, we did see the strongest figure for um, some two years for the third quarter, looking at the revisions there as well, but that is better. Personal consumption coming in at 4%, survey expectations there at 3.8%. This is for the fourth quarter again, so that better than expected once again. The price index for GDP bang in line at 2.3%. Core PCE for the fourth quarter coming in bang in line to 1.9% there. The expectations, we've also got a bit of smattering of other data, wholesale inventory data month on month. Expectations there, half a percent. We came in at 1.1%, so a bit higher month on month in terms of the inventory data. But I'll swing it back to what we got for that annualized figure for the GDP. The final take there, stronger than expected, coming in at 2.9%. We've had two revisions already at 2.7, the expectations so a touch better than expected. Let's just get a quick look at the instant take of the markets as uh, we look at the uh, numbers and the takedown of the markets. A little bit higher there, as you can see, for the, the dollar index. A uh, touch lower for the two-year yield over the last several seconds, but not much of a reaction, remember. Not highly, not under signposted. This is the final take of that GDP numbers. Let's get some reaction now to the data. We welcome uh, Stephen Kim, Evercore Senior Managing Director for Housing Research, and John Bellows of Western Asset Management is still with us. John, your take firstly on the, a snapshot of data here. Well, like you said, it was a, a touch, touch stronger. The real thing is this is Q4 data and yeah, markets forward I know. looking. Been and gone. You know, Q1's <laughs> really, really more interesting. You mentioned PC in the fourth quarter was at 4%. What's interesting is PC for the first quarter is tracking 1.5%. Yes. That's a notable step down. Yes. We've seen two disappointing retail sales reports. We're not seeing kind of any acceleration in sales. And kind of what we'd say is, you know, I think the burden is on kind of the optimist to show us where the growth acceleration is going to come from. We're not seeing it in consumption. I don't think we're seeing it in housing. You know, you see trade deficits it's wider, that's going to be a drag. And so, you know, we, we continue to be of the view that a lot of that optimism that you're hearing from, from people in the market is much more in the forecast than in the data. And, yes. you know, we're, we really want to see it in the data before, before, we, before we're convinced that yes. it's a real thing. Stephen, how much is this just seasonal? As I recall, a year ago right now, we were having a similar discussion. Oh, my goodness, the first quarter is really looking weak. And then it came through in the other quarters. For some reason, first quarters are coming in on the weak side. Well, there's weather factors that obviously affect housing as, uh, as, as well as just some seasonal adjustments that are quite large in the winter because your overall data set is relatively small uh, in terms of sample size. I do believe that the overall underlying strength in housing is stronger than what you've seen from some of the data. We uh, noticed that in, for example, uh, since December, the vast majority, about 80 percent of the data points on housing that we track have come in uh, worse than expected. But uh, that's not matching what we're seeing on the ground. And it's also not matching what uh, Evercore ISI survey uh, of, of home builders is showing either. So in general, I believe that the housing demand is reasonably strong and it's going to rebound. 